Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to be working with exclamation points. And it says, write the function exclamation that takes a string and then returns the same string. So we have a function excla exclamation that takes a string, and that's your parameter or argument. And then it says, then it returns the same string. Here's returning your arrow function with every lowercase i replaced with an exclamation. So here's a lowercase i, here's a lowercase i. The big i, not replaced, but the other ones are. Then it tells you uh, you can convert the initial string to a list. So that's what we're going to do first. That's a skill you need. And then also going back from a list to a string is what you're going to need to do because this ends up being a string in the end. And then in order to go ahead and loop through every element inside of the list. You're going to want to figure out what the length of the list is because each of these pieces of text here have a different number of characters inside of them. And then in order to find out where the eyes are, we have to detect a character and then we need to overwrite it with the exclamation marks. So I'm not going to do the like code for code, what you need to type, but I'm going to go over the four skills. Then hopefully y'all can put it together. So, String to a list. So if I have a name equals to Barbie, and then I want to convert that to a list. Sometimes it's nice to, uh, the thing that you're converting, keep the same first name and then say what it is afterwards. Totally don't have to do it. Just a thought. We can use this function called list. And list takes a parameter, which is a string. And when it takes a string in, it's going to return a list. That's why we have this part right here, because what it returns, we would like to store it inside of a variable so that we can use it later in our program. So then let's just make sure that this works. Let's go ahead and print it out. Let's run it. And there we go. So we have B is the first element at the zero index. A is the next element at the one index. So there we go. Converted a string to um, a list. Now let's have it go backwards. So we're going to take our list and we're going to convert it back to a string using this idea of join. So I'm going to start it with the quotes. Then I'm going to do dot join on that. And then join can take a single parameter and that parameter is a list. So I'm going to do name list. Now, much like the list function up here, it returns a value. So we stored it inside of a variable. We should do the same thing with a join. So a join also returns a value in this case, a string. So let's go ahead and let's call it name string. So as not to be confused with name, which is also a string. And then we should set it equal to, then let's go ahead and print it to find out what happened. Then we'll run it. And we converted it to a list before, and then we took the list and converted it back to a string. So these quotes right here tells you how to join the elements together. So if I do a dash, it will put a dash between each of the elements in the list. Who knew? Well, now you do. If you want to do like a, a new line between them, you can do this slash N. This is a slash that's above the enter key the less use slash poor guy. And it puts a new line character in between each element in the list, but we don't want anything. So we just want to print Barbie like that. All right. Then we need to figure out the length of a list because in our for loop, we'd like to know how many characters we need to go through. So we can do something called len. Len is a function just like list is and join is joins a little bit different because you have this dot notation. So this um, join needs to be done on a string. So that's why it shows it like that. Len though is much more, more like list and it takes one parameter, which is the name of the list. You can also do it with strings. You can put a string here if you'd like. This also returns a value just like the other ones do. So let's just store it for now. I will call it length. Who knew? Then let's print it out to find out the length of it. And it says we have six characters, which is what we have. Boom. So that'll be helpful inside of your for loop. 
where it says for I in range. And then we need to detect a character. More specifically, we need to detect a lowercase letter. For this one, let's do the Bs. Um, let's go ahead and say, um, well, I won't do it exactly, but you need to compare two things. You need to compare an element inside of the list. So how do we get an element inside of the list? Well, we say which list we want to get the element from, and then we do square brackets. And then if we do a zero, then that'll grab the first item in the list. And I can show this by doing a print statement and just printing that out. And it prints B. And then if you want to print the next letter, it'd be a one. And that'd be your A. So we can use this in our loop, but in place of one, we need to put a variable. So the variable that your for loop has, we're going to put it right there. So that the first time through the loop, it grabs the zero index, which is the B. The next time through the loop, it grabs an A because it's a one index. And the next time it's a two index and so on. And then we'd like to compare it to whichever letter we would like to check or search for. So you can do a B, an A, and so on. And that would be for th with the NIF statement. And I think that is enough to help you do the entire thing.